everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about university essay writing. Now, essay writing is something that you might have done a lot of in school, but then university essays are quite different from school essays and require a lot more wider reading and research. And what I found most tricky coming to medical school is that I didn't feel like I got much guidance of actually how to write an essay, how to go about it, how to start, how to research, what to include how to structure it, anything. I just felt like I was really in the dark. And so I thought I'd make this video to give you some advice of some good essays and some really, really good essays that I've done and sort of talk through what the differences were in what made a uh, mid to one essay and what made a high first essay and uh, give you a sort of step-by-step -step guide as to the process I went through in order to make a really well structured and comprehensive essay. So bearing in mind I'm in medical school we don't actually write a lot of essays um, and obviously the essays we do write are science based so if you're a history student or an English student this video might not be as useful for you but I'm sure you could still take away some things from it. So the first essay I wrote was in first year and I got 65% in it and looking back on it now I can really see the difference between the level I was working at back then and the level I work at now. Now I'm not saying 65 isn't a good mark, it's a really good mark, solid, was happy with it at the time, actually I think I was quite surprised I got a mark like that, but since then I have written another essay more recently that I got 75 in and then more recent to that another essay which I got 85 in. So that's actually a 20% difference and a 20% is actually worth, what, two degree classes? So I'm gonna talk you through step by step how I wrote the essay that got me 85. And as I do that, I'll jump in with bits that maybe I didn't really do so well when I got 75 or when I got 65%. Actually getting the essay started is probably the hardest bit. Now, how most science essays will probably work or how at least all of mine worked is that we had some lectures on the content and then we had to go away and take that content and then do our own wider reading and answer an essay question on it. So the starting point is to review the lecture content that you've had. That might be just one lecture, it might be a whole module, whatever it is. And without having done any research, just think about some key points that you can focus in. So I remember when I wrote my most recent essay, we only had one lecture on the topic. And so I just went through the lecture and I thought, what are the kind of key arguments that are jumping out at me? And how can I kind of start a structured and logical way of looking for more information by myself? So at that point, I think I picked out maybe two, three ideas, and that's all I had at the moment. And just as a little pointer, to get any of the high, high marks, in my mark schemes, it was always that you'd done a lot of wider reading and not just relying on the lecture content. So once I'd got my couple of ideas for arguments that I could make, and I understood the lecture content, because understanding the actual content and sort of key concepts is really important at this stage. So once I'd done that, I started my literature search, and so, the way I would suggest to do this is to start broad and then narrow down. And this is actually what I think my lecturer said. So to begin with, I searched for recent systematic reviews that sort of gave a really broad outline of everything going on in the topic. Um, and I went through the review and any kind of interesting point or argument they made, I noted down in a Word document and that would kind of form the basis of where I was going to take my wider reading. And I think after doing, after reading a few big reviews, I came up with the general structure. So I had, I think about five, six paragraphs and each one I could write a heading for. If you can make each paragraph very centered around a particular argument, it makes the whole essay easier to write. So I had headings for each one of my paragraphs. To give an example, this most recent essay I did was about ADHD and mind wandering in ADHD. And so I started off by having um, headings of I was going to do a paragraph on the uh, salience network and I was going to do another paragraph on the executive control network and another paragraph on the default mode uh, network and then what I did is I from these big reviews that I read I went down to the references and interesting where I'd found interesting points I followed the link to those references and then read those articles. So this is narrowing down my search a little bit. So obviously I didn't read every single reference and go through 
every single point they made in their review but the points that fitted the headings that I'd got I then went down those avenues of research so I'd then read all about the executive control network and I'd click any reference that was referring to that any studies that had been done that looked at the executive control network I read them and noted down the key points you can see very quickly how then I could build up a whole paragraph because I was just narrowing my search to this one particular point and just focusing on this one paragraph I would narrow it even further and further so then I began looking into particular theories of how particular things worked and I think you want to be broad in your essays you don't want to just constrict yourself to just tiny niche arguments you want to be broad but at the same time you want to have a sort of you want it to come across that you've you've really been interested by a particular theory or a particular argument and you've really explored that argument in detail what's important as well for really high class essays is to think about your own opinions and and to draw your own conclusions so as well as taking the conclusion from the study that you read what do you actually think about it okay well this study found this but how does that relate to what this study found does that correlate or is that actually kind of contradictory and if it is contradictory why might it be contradictory is it that they use different methods in their studies and so got different results or what other reason could there be for discrepancies between the different results that have been found in the literature and how does this whole argument link to one of your other paragraphs so you've now got your paragraphs with key points and arguments your own ideas and you've got all your paragraphs sort of semi-structured you kind of know what you're talking about now what I find really important, and this is a big difference between my essay that got 65% and my essay got 85%, I really thought about how I can synthesise the information and link the paragraphs in the best way possible. So I found links between arguments from different paragraphs. So this means that your essay will be, rather than being very, what's the word, constricted and being right, I'm going to talk about this in this paragraph, then I'm going to move on, forget that, and talk about this. You want it to all kind of flow together, and you want to, maybe at the end of your first paragraph, you want to kind of introduce the idea that then you're going to talk about in your next paragraph. And I'm not just talking about this in the sort of grammatical sense to make it all sound nice and free-flowing, but actually conceptually, how well do the arguments that you make in this paragraph correlate or contradict the ones that you're going to make in the next paragraph and you're just all the time you're thinking what is the bigger picture and what do all these findings kind of point towards so in a way I guess the best essays that I've written have been ones where I've started broad I've looked at all the arguments and all the different ideas I've then narrowed myself down to really focus on some really key arguments and some key theories and then I've kind of broadened out again in the essay to think, OK, well, I found this about this theory, but how does that apply to all the other arguments I've made? I don't know if this is making sense, but in my head it kind of does. So you want to start broad, go narrow, and then you want to go broad again in what is the big picture? What can I take from all of this? And that's important for your conclusion because you don't want your conclusion, I know you've probably heard this a million times, but you don't want your conclusion to just be summarising what you've already said. You want it to draw together all the loose ends and kind of give a final pointer of okay so taking this argument on board and incorporating this argument it's most likely that maybe this is the right theory. You're not making a statement in that I know from my reading that this theory is definitely right but you're just coming up with an idea and maybe even an original idea. Another thing to keep in mind is that once you've got your kind of rough plan for paragraphs, don't be scared to completely change all of this around. Because the deeper that you read into the topic, the more and more you might find that actually, I wanted one paragraph to be all about this, but that's not actually the most important point. You might want to change it around to give priority to the more interesting and more prominent arguments and give less time and space to ones that maybe aren't so important or maybe they were important and recently the evidence has come about to show that they're not so important anymore. And on that point, um, you want to sort of show an appreciation for how research advances. And I know this seems pretty obvious, but you don't want to base all of your arguments on research that was done 50 years ago and not pay regards to the research that's been done one year ago or has been done this year. So when you're reading references, you always want to look at the date and think, okay is this still relevant based on what has now been found out and a lot of the time it will because I mean science isn't going to 
advance that much that everything that was tw done 20 years ago is now just unimportant. It will still be important and the findings and the conclusions will be important, but maybe newer research will change how you view those conclusions now. And finally, it's something that, I mean, I don't know how much this actually helps in terms of making the content of your essay first class as opposed to 2-1 or 2-2, but you want to make sure that your essay reads well. And I think the best way to do this is to take each sentence and just ask yourself, am I conveying the information in a concise way as possible? Because a lot of these essays you're going to have strict word limits and you don't want to waste words waffling on. So even if the arguments you're making are really complex and intricate, you want the reader to be able to follow them and understand them quite easily. And I think that in itself is quite an art of making complex, maybe scientific arguments seem quite simple and straightforward when you're talking about them. And I think that shows good understanding. If you can explain something in a concise and simple way, it shows that you're really understanding it and you're not having to paraphrase and copy everything that you found online or in a book so that you can get your point across, that you can express it in your sort of own way. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the video. I hope it was helpful for at least someone. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to my channel. So thanks very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.